وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أستغ الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذلك الكتاب ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرتهم يوقنون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty God as you know Allah is the Arabic expression of the God the universal God whom Christians, Jews all people who believe in God they will say when Christians in church um, do mass in Arabic you will see that they will use the word Allah also because that's the universal name of God and in Arabic it means the God he is the Almighty the absolute the infinite and without his existence none of us can exist and our sustenance and maintenance in existence is only possible due to his existence and our eternity is only possible due to his eternity and therefore everything about us that has come into existence is only purely due to his presence and what's so beautiful about the Almighty God is that he's absolutely good and infinitely merciful and therefore whatever he creates even if it appears to be negative in our eyes due to our myopic perspectives we conclude that actually it's all for the greater good because our trials and tribulations which have been created by God in other words the potentials for such trials and tribulations actually do strengthen us as you know as we as human beings know that we know friends after difficulties we know values of people after they struggle we admire heroes due to terrible tragedies and you find that the negatives actually are the springboard of all that is really pushing everything in the positive direction and God has allowed negatives to exist precisely so that we understand the difference between right and wrong and that we through our limited free will make sure that we avoid the negatives just like a student taking an exam the teacher will give them five multiple possible answers four are negative one is positive but we don't say the teacher is negative we don't say the teacher is evil in fact, we understand the gravity of the exam that when the negatives are there and the objective of the student is to avoid the negatives and therefore they get rewarded should they take the positives, that is where the real springboard of progress comes forth. For if negatives did not exist, then we would not understand the values of positives. And the relative being as we are, it's only possible for us to understand the nature of things through such what we call dichotomies or opposites. So we should never be disappointed that negatives exist in the world. We should not be disappointed that why does a merciful God allow such negatives to exist? We should never question such integrities because God has endowed us with sufficient abilities to prevent those negatives that take place. If you examine human tragedy on earth, it doesn't occur primarily due to natural disasters. If you really look at the number of people that die on natural disasters, it's a, it's a very small percentage. Human beings die daily, not due to natural disasters, but due to human misdeeds. Allah says, Inna Allah la yadliman nasa shay'an, walakinna nas anfusahum yadlimun. Indeed, God does not do injustice to his creation. In Allah, he doesn't do injustice to mankind. And of course, Allah doesn't do injustice to any of his creation. But here specifically, God is talking about mankind. Shay'an. Walakinna nas. Rather, it is mankind who does injustice to themselves. If we look even at natural disasters, you will find that usually it's the people who are in the lower economic strata who are the ones who die the most in natural disasters. The wealthy usually don't die in natural disasters. Not because nature has a way to sift out the poor from the rich when it attacks, 
but rather it's the rich that have already known the dangers of nature and have taken the higher positions to ensure that their lives are safe. And therefore we have ignored the poor ones and put them in peril and in states of difficulty. And then we complain, why did these people die? When God is questioning us, why did you not elevate their status when you went up the mountains? Why did you not take them higher from the flood zones? Why did you not help them build homes that can sustain earthquakes? And if you look at wars, just in World War II, 60 million people were killed. Where in the annals of history do you find nature eliminating 60 million people? It's not the, not the case. We find that we are the cause. So God on judgment day is going to question us and say, you had the ability to stop most of the negatives on earth. Why did you not do it? Allah says, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bianfusim. Indeed, Allah does not change the affairs of a community until the community changes themselves first. Meaning God is saying, you are divinely endowed with the ability to prevent danger and mishaps and problems in society. What have you done to change your affairs? God helps those who help themselves, as they say. It's so true. Because if we do not utilize the gifts that God has given, up, given us, then we will be liable. We are liable. Allah says, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ On that day, we will question you. What did you do with my gifts and mercies? So these conversations, inshallah, it is for us to understand, first of all, the grand picture of things is that God is merciful and the negatives exist due to his mercy. وَمِن شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ Allah says, and by the evil which he created, meaning the potential for negation of good exists. Let me define briefly. What is good? Good is everything that God creates. الَّذِي أَحْسَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ Everything in the universe that exists, from the subatomic particle to the grand structures, you will find they are all good. There is no such thing as evil in the tangible five sense of the word. Try it. Fire, explosions, implosions, physics, chemistry, biology, everything is good. Show me what's not good. Tell me. The sky, the earth, the seas, the waves, the tsunamis, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, they're all good. They're needed. Just don't be there when the tsunami is happening and just don't jump into a volcano. You'll go. It's the law of physics. Right? God fixes it. So we know that everything God creates is good. Then what is evil? You will find evil by definition is the willful rejection of good. When you and I willfully reject good, it becomes evil. If something does not have a free will choice, partial of any type, you will find such an act is exempt from evilness. For example, if two objects collide due to the physics of things, there were two hills and there were rocks on the hill, and the law of physics states that if it has enough momentum and it starts to move downward, that they will move in the direction they've been designed to do. Alhamdulillah, they do that. For if those did not do what they did, then you and I would not be able to utilize the principles of physics to do what we normally do. Imagine our cars are built around physics. And if physics was to change, we would be in peril and danger. We as human beings grow and our bones grow based on the gravitational force of Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. It's designed that way. And if we go to the moon, our bones will atrophy. They will brittle. Why? Because the forces of gravity there are much less than here. And our bones are designed to grow based on the physics. So if, we, if God were to stop this physics, then we would suffer. So the physics of two rocks rolling down a hill is nature. And let us say there's a car passing by. 
And these two rocks collide onto the car and kill the passengers in the car. We said, what an evil act. There is no evil in it. For that was purely an accident. Even in the courts of law, if you establish something to be accidental, even intelligent beings who know how to decide their own destinies will tell you that if something did not have a willful intent to commit the evil act, then it comes under the jurisdiction of an accident. And accidents are exempt from any accusations. So we don't say it's evil. When tsunamis take place and people die, you don't say the tsunami was evil. It's a physical law. And the law states that if you are in it, there's a chance you will be damaged. There's nothing evil about it. When you smash something, there's nothing evil about it. But if the intent is to smash someone, if the intent is to kill someone, if the intent is to harm someone, and if the intent is to take somebody away from the good that they were destined for, then that act would be deemed evil. Because there was a willful intent to stop progress, to stop tranquility, to stop harmony, to stop growth. We call that evil. So we agree, if you use basic rational logic, evil only exists when free will exists. If you remove free will, everything becomes the act of God. And then there's no one to judge. And hence the day of judgment doesn't exist. But the day of judgment does exist. Hmm? Allah clearly stated, Right? Indeed, Allah says, in the, with the believers, the Jews, the Christians, the Sabians, Provided you believe in one God and the day of judgment hmm? and do good deeds for you there is no fear la khawfun alayhim walam yahzanun and do not stress yourself you're in good hands Quran is saying this it's an amazing series of verses that the Quran addresses what are the criteria believe in God and day of judgment why day of judgment why can't I just believe in God so God says you are under trial and your free will is under observation. And if you did not have free will, there would be no need for a day of judgment. So proof positive, the only, the only reason you and I must believe in the day of judgment is so that you and I hold ourselves liable in the sense of our responsibilities as a creation of God, endowed with the responsibility to be promoters of good and demoters of evil. Salawat ala Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. It's very important, is what I'm speaking about right now is very essential for us to understand because when we really bring this to focus, a lot of our anxieties, dissatisfactions, confusions, what we call temporal agnosticism that we all tend to go towards sometimes wondering if God is really there or if he's there, we wonder if he's really good or if he's really good, we wonder if he's really hearing us, etc., etc. All these feed into our, what we call, um, mistrust, distrust, into our um, attitude of uncertainty. So Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah says, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون Allah starts the second chapter of the Quran by saying, in this book, there is no doubt. Who are they? For those who are God conscious, who protect themselves from the evils of the world. Muttaqeen are people who are aware of the dangers and the evils of society. And they take every measure in life 
to avoid themselves from going towards evil because they know their free will is being tested and they know that the Almighty God is observing them and they know that they have the ability to dictate their own future. They have the ability to dictate their own successes and failures and therefore they take every possible measure with vigilance to ensure that they do not go towards the wrong side. Like a student who's very good ensures that they don't put the wrong answers in a test. Why? Because they're vigilant. They will look over. Did I put this right answer? Hold on. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I did it wrong. Shaitan, the evil forces, comes and puts doubt in us. And Allah says, قُلْ عَوْذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَّهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ Say, I seek refuge in the Lord. قُلْ عَوْذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ The Lord of mankind. مَلِكِ النَّاسِ The master of mankind. إِلَهِ النَّاسِ The God of mankind. مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ From the evil whisperings of the devil. This being and his cohorts, meaning humans too, are ever so ready to whisper negatives into our ears in order to take us from the path of God. Isn't it true? You and I are all subject to that. The whisperings of people to try to dissuade us from doing good things. It's an irony of life when we should all get together to promote each other towards good, how often the human race whispers negatives into their peers' ears in order to prevent them from progressing. Because that individual who's whispering the negatives has decided to be regressive and they don't want to be alone in their regression, so they whisper into the ears of others to join them into a larger audience so that they don't feel as guilty. Sad. Allah says, Min sharril waswasil khannas. How do we remove the sharr? This conversation is an example. That we look at certainty and we look at the principles of good versus evil. And we go into these observations and say, that is true. Is there really holistic evilness? No. By the way, some people argue that we don't have free will. God has predestined everything. Just a quick update on this. There is no such thing as totality of predestination. Predestination is in its limited form, meaning God has decreed our existence, the earth, the physics of the universe, our shape as human beings, all of the things you and I cannot change, our birth dates, you know, our humanity, our inability to breathe underwater without an apparatus. These are all predestined. And those are not subject to questioning on Judgment Day. What we will be subjected on Judgment Day is the power of the free will that you and I can exercise, which is the moral judgments we make of good versus evil choices. That will be questioned on Judgment Day. And Allah is warning us that be careful of that. Do not negate each other for your skin colors. Do not negate each other for your economic differences. Do not negate each other due to your gender differences, male versus female. Do not. God says, Ya yuhal nas inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnaakum shu'ooban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inna Allah yadqaakum. O mankind, we have made you male and female nations and tribes so you know each other, lita'arafu, meaning these are beautiful creations of God with varieties. Do not subject one against the other. Do not say the white race is superior to the black race or vice versa. Do not say that the stronger person is better than the weaker person. Do not say the taller is better than the shorter or the person with better muscles. None of that. Do not say the more intelligent is better than the less intelligent. Help the less intelligent. Do not look down upon them. We are all gifted with these blessings of God. But rather you and I should judge at the moral level. I will not associate with a liar. I will not associate with a thief. I will not associate with a criminal. I will not associate with a troublemaker. I refuse and I love honest people. 
And I love generous people. I love caring people who are sharing, giving, forgiving. I love them. That selection you and I must do. Because that's merit-based. It's no longer looking at the gender or the skin color or the economics. And God says, Man amana billah wal al akhir. Provided you believe in God and the day of judgment and do good deeds. What are the good deeds? The principles of God. Promote justice and equity on earth. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, kunu qawamina lillahi shuhada bil qist. Wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala an la ta'adilu. I'adilu hu aqrabu lit taqwa. I love this verse. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 8, when God says, O oh, mankind, all believers here, and when Allah addresses believers, He's addressing mankind, but He's addressing the leaders of mankind, the believers. Ya yuhalladina amanu, kunu qawwamina lillah, maintain the justice among the people, qawmin. Maintain justice in your community, and do not let a hatred of one against the other skew your necessity for justice. This is under trial on Judgment Day. That you should not be just because you have a vengeance and a hatred. Stop whispering negatives into people's ears. Block them. When people whisper negatives, stop it. Question it. Excuse me. Where did you get this from? What's your proof? Where's your evidence? Huh? Well, I heard it. Well, go find it. Don't, don't share and spread this Chinese whisper. For it's going to become something else tomorrow. And many a people will be harmed. Allah says, لا يغتب بعضكم بعضا. Do not backbite each other. أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا. Do you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? فكرهتمو. It's disgusting. وَاتَّقُوا الله. Be conscious and be aware of the negatives and avoid them. وَاتَّقُوا الله. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, There is no doubt, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهُ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Those who are God conscious. Who are they? الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ They believe in the unseen. Because they are rational. They know the future is powerful. And God's knowledge of the future does not mean that He dictated our destinies. No. God knows everything. He has no future. Please understand that. God has no future. And I stress it. God has no time. God created time. He created space. He created matter. Let's not put him in it. He's beyond it. So when you say, how does God know my future? That's different from saying, how does God know the future? Even that implies that he is also experiencing time. For how does he know tomorrow? I don't know tomorrow. How does he know? Don't be fooled by that. Simplest, there are many, many arguments to prove the point that free will exist. But one, simple one. God is all good. We've established this in this conversation. 100%. There is no doubt in it. So whatever God does is good. Therefore, whatever God does has no evil. We all agree. It's logical. Follow the logic. But evil exists. And evil practices are pervasive on this earth. And if God had predestined everything for us to do what we were supposed to do, then technically there should be no evil. And our naming these things as evil is absurd. But we know that evil exists. And people do perform evil. So therefore, it's only logical to say that God has commissioned that existence only due to the willful rejection of good in the limited free will he has given us. Proof positive that free will exists. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The argument is yaqeen. How do I get certainty? You will notice that in society, socially, we love people who are confident. We love confidence. Even if their choices are wrong, in times of tragedies and difficulties, 
We love leaders who appear confident. They may make wrong choices, but there's a sense of calm, calmness when we know there is somebody in the room that is confident. Now, the self-projected confidence shows itself very easily. We're talking about confidence, where people make choices as directors of corporations who have a very clear vision of what they want to execute for tomorrow. We love it. I know people, when you study them, they love to be around confident people. Even in marriage relations, you will find women love confident men. And men love confident women. Because confidence is a sign of tranquility. It's a sign of hope. It's a sign of strength. For you may be wrong in your vision, but at least you are driven by it. At least you're committed towards it. At least you are adamant towards it. Isn't that good? Who is the best human being? The one who has confidence in the divine, in the divine system. The one who not only knows what to do for tomorrow's business or the children that they will bear or the homes that they will build, but for eternity. They have confidence for eternity. As I mentioned, you know, last week. Actually, I mentioned on, thir on Thursday. I mentioned that Islam is, is a religion is, that has the roadmap for eternity. Nobody in the world, I promise us, Christians, Jews, they are very close to the Ab among the Abrahamic faiths, very close to Islam. But when you look at the core principles of religion, nothing with all due respect to all the other religions, comes even close. For the purity of the oneness of God, to maintain it and to really understand how it works, nobody's got it, with all due respect, except Islam. In Nadina and Allah al-Islam. When I debate atheists, they sweat because they don't know how to capture Tawheed. But if you believe God had a son who died on a cross, it's easy. If you believe God chooses you as a special group of people in the rest that are supposed to be the scum of the earth, it's easy. If you believe there are millions of gods, it's easy. If you believe God can be born and dies, it's easy as an atheist to defeat them. But when you have pure monotheism, and that monotheism is the driving force of all temporal events, and the absolute is so conspicuously, ubiquitously present in everything you and I look at. Subhanallah, what do you do? God says, yaqeen, have certainty, and then chart your ways for tomorrow, and you will see how amazing your life will be. So I'm going to conclude within the time that I have in the 10-15 minutes. From Surah Al-Waqiyah, as I was mentioning, as I touched Surah Al-Baqarah today, who are these people who have yaqeen? They believe in the unseen. Unseen, my brothers and sisters, requires these kinds of conversations. Why does evil exist? Why do I exist? Why do people die? Why do babies die? We all have such questions. Every one of us. Even atheists will argue, if God were to be there, why did he allow all these children to die? Why did he allow Hitler, you know, to expand his powers. Why do we allow tyrants of the world today to succeed? Why does God not stop them? The simplest answer is, what are you doing to stop it? Don't sit around and ask God to do things when the greatest gift God has given us is our free will. If you and I do not practice it, God says on judgment day, I will raise you blind, deaf, and dumb. And we will ask God, but I had eyes when I was on earth. I could hear when I was on earth. Allah says, you didn't use it when I gave it to you. So now I've raised you deaf, dumb, and blind. Because you abused my gifts. That means you and I must carefully administer within ourselves certainty. Projections towards the positive. Now, I may sound a bit too idealistic here, but not at all. On a day-to-day -day basis. 
Every move you and I make, do it with certainty. But how do you gain real certainty? When you have the roadmap to eternity. And you must take into account the divine message. For without the divine message, you and I will not know what to do with life. You and I will be good in temporal ways, but you and I will fall. You know, I was just reading an article today. Anthony Robbins, as you know, is a famous motivational speaker. Guy is a billionaire. Very motivating. Extremely motivating. If you listen to him, he basically says anybody can do anything they want. And I agree with him. And many of the things he says are brilliant. But you notice how he talks? He's crass and vulgar, filled with filthy words. It's an indicator that this man is angry. I thought you're supposed to be with tranquility when you speak this way. But people are longing for motivation. They don't care if you use vulgarity, as long as you can inspire me. And recently he's been accused of sexual harassment. 20 people have come forth. Similar to what the other giants, people like Charlie Rose and Bernstein and all these Hollywood moguls, giants in society, making hundreds of millions, people like Bill O'Reilly, making hundreds of millions of dollars, but they lack the eternal vision. Their vision is stamped with time. And they, are, they think they are so powerful like Pharaoh. The Pharaoh says, you see how powerful I am? Look at them bowing to me and I tell them I'm God and they bow to me. And Musa comes with his staff. He says, didn't God dress you better than this? Look at me, how nicely dressed I am with gold and silver. And Musa taps his staff on the floor. He says, my staff is enough. Confident. Why? Because he's got the eternal roadmap. Pharaoh doesn't. So people like this Anthony Robbins now is being accused and accusers have come forth in so many ways that he is somebody who has many, many bad characteristics in terms of his behavior with women. He can't talk about it on this pulpit. It's a shameful thing. So you would think, well, you're so motivated. What happened to your morals? Now I'm not pointing a finger at him or poking in his eyes. All of us, including myself, should we dare to claim that we have the means by which to reach tranquility and harmony with certainty, then it better show in our modesty and it better show in our behavior. And if it doesn't, then there's something intrinsically wrong with what we're saying. Allah says, لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَتْ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Why do you say that which you don't do? It is detestable to God that you say that which you don't do. Actions speak louder than words. Our prophets have told us, our imma have told us, act on it and the world will follow you. So we need to be a confident society. We need to have a vision and understand the divine mercy of God. And we need to come to terms with the fact that God has blessed us with free will and it is upon us to decide our own destinies and let not the whisperings of the negatives sway us from the path of God and let us be vigilant and persistent on a constant basis to be upright as Allah says رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ Notice again, Quran is showing me. Who are these people? They have an eternal roadmap. يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ They are afraid of that day. They know there is a day of judgment. They know they will be liable. Do you and I have it? Let's read the Quran. And you will see briefly, within the time that I have, that in Surah number 56, and I'll, I've recited some of it, but I'll continue with it because I was reading it the other night. I couldn't stop reading this surah over and over. And I've recited Surah Al-Waqiyah to the point where I memorized it. But it's like I just read it first time. And I kept looking at it and said, this is the surah that I know. Like, oh my God, how little I know. And it's exposing things to me that I never imagined was there. And God says, come, I will teach you something. And this knowledge will seep into your heart and it will strengthen you. 
Allah says, لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا مَعْ إِيمَانِهِمْ We will increase your faith upon your faith. But study it. Understand it. This is my roadmap. Hold on to it. The whisperings of society will try to take you away from this path. Watch out. And you know what's beautiful, and I'll just generalize it, and then I'll talk about it is that the majority of the human race will enter paradise. Now, many a times we've been told, no, oh no, brother, the majority will enter hell. Even Barker told me, you know, in the debate, he said, Hassanain, all the people according to your religions, they're going to hell. There's going to be a lot more parties over there, a lot more social activities there. Look, Barker is telling me that. And there'll be very few in paradise, you know, I mean, to make it in there? Oh my God. They say for a rich man to enter paradise is like passing a camel through the eye of the needle. <laughs> yeah. So when you and I think that way, yeah, you see? We're losers anyway. And Shaitan says, exactly. So might as well have fun here. I mean, you're going to get doomed there anyway. So <laughs> why bother? You're not going to make it anyway. So go for the materials. Go for the palaces. Be Machiavelli. Rob and cheat. Get it now. Enjoy it. It's better now. Allah says in Quran, He fools you. So you might say, brother, what do you mean by that? Well, let's understand that there is, there are stations in paradise. Low stations and high stations. Don't forget that. God is merciful. Now, please, I'm saying this with sincerity. If you want to be, and myself, foolish, go for the lesser. Everything you and I do in life, we want the best. If I can get something better, why shouldn't I get it? Allah says exactly. So don't go for the lesser. So if you know there are low stations of paradise, but there are also high stations of paradise, don't say, well, as long as I get into the low stations, I'm happy, you know, as long as I avoid hell. Don't do that, please. That mentality is self-negating. It's actually rejecting the mercy of God. Allah says, no, you strive to get to the finest. It's your choice. And if you decide to go to hell, and Allah says it, those who go to hell want to go to hell. They don't go to hell because they don't want it. When a human being does not want to go to hell, common sense, do you think they will ever enter hell? Logically. Of course not. When you want to survive, mothers who have seen their children stuck under a car, because they don't want their children to die, have lifted an entire car and got the child out. How does a mother lift a car? Men and women put together cannot lift a car. But when you want something, you get it. As they say, necessity is the mother of all inventions. So in conclusion to this, Allah says, when you enter hell, it's because you wanted it. And in fact, Allah asks that in Surah Al-Mulk. When they are about to be thrown in hell, the angels are looking at them like, what are you doing here? How'd you get here? After all the mercies of God, after 124,000 prophets, after all the scriptures given unto you, after all the representatives of God, the Aima, who guided you, protected you, did everything good for you, how did you get here? And they're asking, Alam ya'atikum nadir? Didn't I want to come to you? Qalu bala, qad ja'ana nadirun fakadzabna. Wa qulna ma nazzal Allahu min shay. We belied these prophets. When they came, we told them, no, there was no revelation. Wa qulna ma nazzal Allahu min shay. In antum illa fi dalalin kabir. Wa qalu law kunna nasma'u aw na'qilu ma kunna fi ashab al-sa'id. If only we paid attention and followed and taken heed to the warnings, we would not be in this state. مَا كُنَّ فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِدِ فَعَتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ They will recognize their evils. فَعَتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ And God says, I am furthest away from them. So you and I have to make that decision. The beauty of Surah Al-Waqi, Allah describes three groups. وَكُنْتُ مَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثَ فَأَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ Ashabul Mash'ama was Sabiqun as Sabiqun. Three groups. You and I should zone on the third group. But Allah says, Thullatu min al awwaleen 
wa qalilun min al akhirin let me describe this very briefly god now is talking about those who are the foremost of the foremost and they will enter paradise without being questioned as you know by the way as i mentioned the other day you and i were created for paradise we were not created for hell but because god is merciful and he has given us free will allah allows us to go there if we want it meaning hell otherwise we were not created for it it's the truth if you read the quran you will see it even hajj ah- ahmad hamdan when he recited the ayah today allah says they will enter hell even hell allah says labithina fiha ahqaba they will remain in it for a time they will purify themselves if needed the ones who want to stay in it will stay in it forever imam ali alayhi salam was asked that question he says the one who even if he's removed from hell after a long time continues to reject god will be the one who will remain in hell forever god is too merciful so allah says that third group special right who are they they say wa kuntum azwajan thalatha the third group sabiqun as-sabiqun sabiqun are the foremost when allah says there will be plenty thullatun min al-awwalin wa qalilun min al-akhirin then when god talks about the people of ashab al-yamin the ones who will enter paradise allah says thullatun min al-awwalin wa thullatun min al-akhirin a lot from the beginning and a lot in the in the after we'll describe that another time in my next presentation what does it mean that there's many in the in the earliest stages and less the word sabiqun are people who are proactive agents who run towards good and they don't waste time they don't wait for the dust to settle you see they don't wait for things to get into hype movement bandwagons and then they join the good god said sabiqun here are always pushing and moving khadija alayhi salam for example as soon as the prophet got revelation she said i am your follower the first woman to accept islam she didn't wait like let me think about it you know i mean although she was already a muslima by the way all the banu hashim never worshiped idols they were all believers in god but the prophet declaring himself as the final prophet is a choice of shahada choice we make and you find that khadija immediately accepted it interestingly imam ali alayhi salam was a young boy immediately accepted it why no hesitation so allah says there are plenty of those who are in the beginning stages the ones who move fast who don't waste time they will be so foremost that they will enter paradise and you will be in such beautiful places that allah is talking about the couches that he talks about for example ulaik al muqarrabun fi jannatin aim thullatun min al awwalin wa qalilun min al akhirin ala sururin mawduna decorated thrones muttaqin alayha mutaqabilin reclining on them facing one another socially it's not a it's not a sad place it's full of being around the worshipers of god we'll talk about that too yatufu alayhim wildanun mukhalladun you will see youth never aging meaning angels around you as mates okay bi akwabin wa bariq wa ka'sin min ma'in you'll be drinking magnificent drinks la yusaddauna anha wa la yunzifun no headaches no tiredness wa fakit mimma yatakhayyarun you will eat all kinds of fruits wa lahmi tayrin mimma yashtahun the flesh of fowl they will be all delicious quran says wa hurun ain you will have mates who are so beautiful ka amthal al lu'lu al maknun the like of hidden pearls jazaa'an bima kanu ya'malun a reward for using your free will to avoid evil and to promote good i'm paraphrasing la yasma'una fiha laghwan wa la ta'thima you will not hear vain talk Mm-mm. not even sinful discourse illa qilan salaman salama except peace for how long eternity washabul yamin ma ashabul yamin and the people of the right hand who are they 
في سدر محدود amid thornless lot trees this is a big discussion thornless lot trees shaded trees so magnificent there are no thorns in it very smooth you will love being around them وطلحن مندود trees with large leaves some call it banana trees as an example one above the other وذل ممدود extended shades وماء مسكوب water flowing constantly وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة abundant fruits neither intercepted nor forbidden meaning everything is halal وفرش مرفوعة exalted thrones إن أنشأناهن إن شاء Surely we have made them to grow into a new growth. Meaning when we die, we will grow into a new growth in the next world. That's what Quran is saying. فَجَعَلْنَا هُنَّ أَبْكَارًا Then we have made them virgins. Loving, عُرُبًا عَتْرَابًا The Prophet said all people will enter paradise the same age. Hadith says 33 years of age. No old person will enter hell or paradise, I mean. لأصحاب اليمين for the sake of the companions of the right hand ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين a numerous company from the first numerous company from the latter but when we go to talk about people of hell there is no mention in this surah about the numbers وأصحاب الشمال now God takes me and shows me what hell is ما أصحاب الشمال what will make you know the people of the wretchedness, the ones who are فِي سَمُومٍ وَحَمِيمٍ in hot winds and boiling water وَذِلٍ مِّنْ يَحْمُودٍ and shades of black smoke they will be in shades but it will be black smoke لَا بَارِدٍ وَلَا كَرِيمٍ it's neither cool nor honorable إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مُتْرَفِينَ surely they were before that made to live in ease and plenty they were having fun on this earth, cheating, lying, stealing, destroying people. Allah says, now they're going to get what they deserve. They persisted in great violation. And they used to say, listen to this, and I end with this. What? When we die, and have become dust and bones, we will be raised again? No. There is no life after death. We all turn to dust. Allah says, وَدَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا وَنَسْيَ خَلْقًا قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ قُلْ يُحْيِي الَّذِي يَنْشَاءَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً They ask, how will we be raised again? God says, you were nothing before and I created you. Isn't that a bigger question you should be asking? For when you are dust, you come back. It's a secondary question. You did not exist. You were not worthy of being mentioned before. Now you're asking how you'll come back. This, the person who says this, has no eternal roadmap. You see, they say when we die, everything dies. The moral system dies. The whole system dies. God says your morality has to depend on eternity, has to be dependent on the day of judgment, has to depend on rewards and punishment. Otherwise, the moral argument falls apart. So Allah says, who are the ones who will enter paradise? The ones who believe in the day of judgment, the ones who do good deeds, the ones who have a mental image. Because what happens after that? you become certain. And when you have certainty, you will make wise choices. And when you make wise choices, you become a blessing for humanity and yourself. May Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah. But in this month of Ramadan, while you and I are fasting, these are the thoughts we should have. And every handshake, every salam, every business dealing, every human being we touch, don't forget, it's being recorded. And that there is a written document that will come to us on Judgment Day. In Surah Isra, Allah says, Iqra kitabaka kafa binafsik. Read that book that has been put on yourself. Read it. It is your act. Amazing. And I tell you, in all the years of my life, studying and traveling and debating, 
and going to even some of the most prestigious academic institutions to speak to scholars, nothing equals these conversations. Nothing. وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة Here we're asking God to give us a good government دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله Meaning it becomes the standard for mankind with justice وتذل بها النفاق وأهله and to debase the troublemakers, the ones who create trouble in society. وَتَجْعَلُنَا فِيهَا مِنَ الدُّعَاتِ لَا تَعَتِكَ Give us from what we seek from you that is good for us. وَالْقَادَةِ لَا سَبِيلِكَ وَتَرْزُقُنَا بِهَا كَرَامَةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Give us from your mercy, from your grace in this world and in the next. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Assalamu alaykum alaykum jameen wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have iftar. Of course, we will have salah. You're more than welcome to join us. We will be honored with your presence. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaykum.